Now I promised we'd come back to us, so back to this, and we have. So earlier I said, okay, we're going to have this tangential force right here, and we're going to go back to its initial equation, which is you know mass times velocity times the change of velocity with position. And this is going to give us some very very interesting information. So if we integrate that and we do it correctly, what we'll get is that the following is true. Now, what does this actually look at? Well, it's saying that the sum of my work is going to be equal to the change in my energy, the change in my potential energy. So my work is going to be equal to the change by potential, potential energy. Now, where does that come from? Well, some of the forces in the tangential is equal to mass velocity dv ds. Multiply both sides by ds. Some of the forces tangential ds is equal to mass velocity dv. Integrate both sides, and if I have force times a distance, well, that's work. So that's where that becomes work. And if I integrate this, well, I'm going to get that 1 half mv squared. I'm going to go from some initial velocity to some final velocity, and that's why I have this. Okay, so our total work is going to change our kinetic energy, which is important because this connects the amount of work being done and the amount of force being applied to a change in velocity. Now, the sum of work is the work of all forces, the weight, the springs, friction, we can do this, um, acting on our body. And it can be either positive or negative. If it's positive, V2 will be greater than V1. If it's negative, V2 will be less than V1. Now, T1 and T2 are not talking about tension there. That is the kinetic energy of the particle. And you can just plug them in. Oops, sorry, reversed it. Plug it right here, if you wish. The kinetic energy is always, always positive. You can't have negative kinetic energy because kinetic energy, you can't have an imaginary velocity. This is just saying what I said earlier, that the work will change your kinetic energy. Now, this is not a vector equation. That's a scalar, that's a scalar, and that's a scalar. Um, so do not try to break it into components. It won't work. When you get work, it is simply a scalar now, force times distance. You took that dot product and you got rid of all of the vector vectorness. Now the units for this energy and work are joules, which is one newton per meter. In the FPS system, it would be foot pounds. Now this can't be used to find forces that are directed normal to the path because they do no work. If they do no work, they don't have a place in this equation and they can't help you out. And one last little detail here is that we can do this for a system of particles by summing the kinetic energy of all particles in the system and the work due to all forces acting on the system. I mentioned earlier that friction does work. And it's not necessarily the easiest thing to show, but let's look at it. So if we have a body and it's sliding over a rough surface, well, you realize that friction is going to slow it down. Now, if we apply a force P that's just as strong as the max kinetic friction, or the kinetic friction, then the velocity will stay constant, it'll be maintained. But we're having to apply a force P to get to that point. So therefore, we would look at this and we would see that, okay, our sum of works are the following, and our initial and final velocities would be constant. Therefore, for this to work, we would see that our load we're applying would have to be equal to the normal force times the kinetic um, coefficient of kinetic friction, which means that we are applying work which is then just being dissipated by friction. Friction dissipates the energy. It dissipates the work you're doing. Now, where does the energy go? Well, it is going into heat, into sound, into various other things that are happening. Deformations of mighty, tiny little particles 
at the surface is also causing it. So all of that is dissipating your energy. And we can go ahead and we don't need to worry about the heat and anything else like that. It's all just taken into account with our frictional force right here. So I think that's everything it is. So next time we'll jump straight into an example. Thank you for listening and I'll see you all soon. Bye-bye.